Start twisting The forest sounds with cedars breaking The waters see you And start their writhing From the depths a song is rising Now it's rising from the ground Now it's rising from the ground Holy, 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 holy Lord The earth is yours and sea Your voice it thunders, the ground is shaking, the mighty mountains now are trembling. Creation sees you and starts composing, the fields and trees they start rejoicing. Now it's rising from the ground. Now it's rising from the ground. Here's crying out. Here's crying out. Holy, 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 holy Lord. The earth is yours. And Thank you so much. Welcome to Lord of Life. I'm Pastor Caitlin, and whether you are worshiping in person or online, welcome to this worship service. Um, Our new worship series is kicking off this weekend, and it is called Meeting Jesus. We're exploring different images of Jesus that sustain us throughout our life, and today we are talking about Meeting Jesus, the Friend. Um, A couple of announcements that are happening around our community. As you came in, you may have noticed a table in our narthex or lobby area. October is Feed My Starving Children Month. We have partnered with this organization for a number of years. And so please check out that table to figure out ways in which you can give or donate or give of your time as well. So it's a great opportunity to get connected with a great organization. We also have an upcoming event for the Connect Life group, and this is open to really anybody who wants to have a conversation around faith and community. Um, Tomorrow night it is at Omni Brewing, and then Tuesday night it's offered on Zoom. This year we're looking at scriptures we might have learned in Sunday school or when we were kids and looking at what they mean for our lives today and there might be more to the story than what we remember. So it's a fun chance to dig into scripture together and getting to know some great people. We also have a community event coming up called Trunk or Treat on October 24th. It's a Sunday afternoon from 3 to 5 p.m. Who here has heard of Trunk or Treat before? Okay, quite a few. Um, Basically, it's an afternoon where people can bring their vehicles, open the trunk and decorate it, wear silly costumes, hear some music, and see the joy on a bunch of children's faces. 
I don't know if you have kids or grandkids or if you are one of them, but it is so fun. My almost five-year-old is really excited to be a branch for Halloween. <laughs> we're not talking about trolls. We're talking about a tree branch. So if anything, come and check out that awesome costume. Um, we are looking for volunteers to have the trunks available and also donations for candy if you can't be there. So if you do a trunk, know that you aren't on the line for a ton of candy as well. We'll provide that. So please consider volunteering. There's more information on our website at lordoflife.org slash trunk or treat. And with that, a big thank you to the Brian and the worship band today, to Pastors Dave and Karen for leading us in worship, and to our AV team and our hospitality team who are, are keeping everything running. So, and with that, most of all, thanks to God for why we worship. So please stand as you are able. Good morning, church. God is with us. We have reason to worship. Uh, let's give it up and welcome uh, Greg Byers, who's playing cello today with us. Very, very fun. Also, Sarah and Tom being, uh, uh, lending their amazing <laughs> talents. <laughs> they, uh, uh, let's sing. Mightier than the thunder of great water. Mightier than the breakers of the sea It's you who stands firm It's you who is throne in majesty Mightier than the skies that hold the clouds Mightier than the heavens high above it's you who stands firm, it's you who is throne in majesty. All the seas lift up their voices, and the skies pound their big drums, yeah, the rocks cry. And time just stands still. Mightier than the stones that hold the world. Mightier than the rock underneath my feet. It's you who stands firm, it's you who is throne in majesty. Mightier than the time that marches on, mightier than the countless centuries. It's you who stands firm, it's you who throned in majesty and all the seas lift up their voices and the skies pound their big drums yeah the rocks cry out your name and time just stays Time just stands still, we just stand still. This glorious moment can't just end till we sing out loud, we sing out to you our love. Let's sing it again. Time just stands still, we just stand still. This glorious moment can't just end till we sing out loud. Oh, 
we sing out to you our love. Oh, all the seas lift up their voices, and the skies pound their big drums. Yeah, the rocks cry out your name. And time. All I 
seated. As we reflect on meeting Jesus this season, I want to invite you into an ancient spiritual practice called the daily examen. In this, we become attuned to God's presence in our everyday lives through prayer and silence. It's about listening more than speaking. So let these words fill you and let your mind wander. Let us pray. Jesus, trusting in your unfailing love for us and the world, we relax into this moment, into this seat, and into the breath that fills our lungs and gives us life. Jesus, thank you for your presence as we reflect on the last week. Open our eyes and heart to see. Where did we experience a sense of joy? For what are we most grateful? If we could relive one moment from this past week, what would it be? Breathe in your gratitude from this moment. Savor this grace. Relive the moment and receive life from it once again. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of this experience. Trusting in your unfailing love for us and the world once again, we relax into this moment and into the breath that continues to fill our lungs and our bloodstream. Jesus, be with us as we look at our lives once again. As we reflect on the last week or so, what is the moment for which we are least grateful? When was it difficult to receive and give love? Reflect on this difficult situation as it is without trying to fix or change anything. Take a few deep breaths. Let Jesus' love fill you just as you are right now. Let us pray. Jesus, you are slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and full of compassion. We thank you for the joy that we received this week. We thank you for your presence with us when life was difficult and uncomfortable. In the joy and in the challenges of being human, you assure us of your presence and action in our daily lives. Help us follow your call to love ourselves as you do and to love others as our precious neighbors and your beloved children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good With 
reading is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Thank you, Jamie. I invite you to stand as you are able for today's gospel reading, and it's coming from the book of John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you 
and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What Jesus told the disciples so very long ago, he is telling us today. You are my friends. I call you friends. I chose you. Poets and theologians, philosophers, novelists, psychologists, filmmakers, sociologists, and even anthropologists have all explored this concept of friendship. Well, songwriters, they are also moved by this idea of friendship. And there are oodles and oodles of songs written about friendship. a friend is one of my all-time favorites. It was sung by James Taylor and written by Carol King. Friend. How do you define friend? Well, I actually kind of like the simplicity of Charlie Brown's definition. A friend is someone who sticks up for you when you're not there. Now, the Bible defines true friendship as being characterized by love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. When we take a look back into the Roman times, back in that world, the word friend was defined as an expression of trust, loyalty, intimacy, and sharing that set your friends apart from everyone else in your life. With a friend, you build a loving, close, and lasting relationship. Now, this kind of friend, it has absolutely nothing to do with likes on Facebook or how many people are following you on Instagram. According to Jesus, friends honestly divulge everything about themselves, their deepest feelings and their desires. Friends trust one another with their lives. Well, they enjoy each other's company. They feel completely at home and at peace. And there is no unfair judgment in the relationship, no hostility, no competition, only love. You and I, we are created to be in relationship, uh, friends with one another and friends with God. Friends and love, 
they go together. So we're going to take just a second and watch a short video. And while you're watching it, I want you to think about your dearest friend. How did you meet? And how do you feel when you're with them? What is it that you love about them? Let's watch. Friends make us feel loved, and they give us opportunities to love. And when we boil down the words of Jesus's in this passage, we find that he is inviting you to be his friends. And he is choosing you. When I was in college, there was this girl in my English class who said to me one day, completely out of the blue, I want to be friends with you. Ew. I thought that was super weird because I really have never had anyone say that to me before. I never really gave friendship that much thought. Friendships just sort of happened, didn't they? And this intention of friendship well, it made me suspicious. What did she really want? But once I got over being spooked about it, she became one of my very best friends. And this friendship, it didn't just happen. It was an intentional action that over the years grew into a true friendship. Just deciding to be friends doesn't make a friendship. And Jesus, Jesus is being intentional with you. He wants to be friends. Jesus doesn't want you to just know about him. He wants you to know him, to be friends with him and to love him. Hmm. Think about that. But what's the catch? Are we really expected to follow the commandment to love one another as God has loved us and to lay down our life for our friends? Ooh, commandment. That is such a strong word, isn't it? And, and it feels sort of demanding and kind of bossy. But what Jesus is telling us is that when we are in a relationship, friends with him, that we will receive his instruction and then we can apply that to our lives. And then you know what's gonna happen? Our friendship will grow and grow as together we build a committed relationship. One where we are becoming more like Jesus, fulfilling that commandment. Okay, so now I'm thinking you all are feeling a little bit better about that commandment thing. But what about this laying down of one's life? You know, this statement is often referring to those who die or who are willing to die in the service of other people. However, in the context of this passage, Jesus was preparing the disciples for his impending 
arrest and death. Still, we are not off the hook because this verse applies to you and me. Jesus' references to following his commands and loving others, well, it involves giving up our own ways of doing things and, and laying down our life to do things God's way. Truly loving others by laying down one's life, it involves abiding, following in the love of Jesus intentionally and consistently, and sacrificing our own self-interests for God's plan. And you know what? There is no way we could ever do this without friendship with Jesus. So, how can we be friends with Jesus? You see this acronym PAL, prayer, abide, and love. And I know you might be thinking, PAL, well that's kind of corny, being pals with Jesus. Well, it might seem simplistic, but it is critical. So prayer. Prayer is essential to our friendship with God. You know, making time to share Sometimes with words, sometimes in silence, sometimes with just thoughts, or in patient listening. It's communion with intention. You know, and if you just set some time aside each day to check in with God, well, that shows good intention. And I know, sometimes our prayers, they're super clumsy, but don't let that discourage you because the power of prayer is in the one who hears it, not in the one who says it. Time with Jesus, it nourishes our friendship and it builds within us the ability to share that love and friendship with others. A. Abiding, being friends with Jesus, it includes abiding. And Jesus is teaching by example. His example of abiding in God's love. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Abiding in Jesus, it's synonymous with knowing Jesus and following his teachings. To abide in Jesus means to intentionally remain in that ever-growing relationship with him that transforms your character, character to be more like his. And, and not giving up on your friendship with Jesus, but continuing despite any doubts that you may have or any hardships that you're going through to allow God to work through you, to transform you. Abiding in Jesus, it expresses an intimate, close relationship, not just a superficial acquaintance. Prayer plus abiding equals love. So this abiding is nourished by prayer, and prayer empowers abiding, which results in love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes, believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Now the love in this passage, well, it isn't referring to romantic love, but agape love. Agape is the Greek word for this kind of selfless love, an act of the will. And it is this love that God is pursuing you. Wow. How do we respond to this love? Well, recently, I was reading this really good book, and I would highly recommend it to you. It's called A Minute of Margin by Richard Swenson. And he asks a similar question, just a little bit differently, but oof, more intensely. 
and he says this. If God's greatest commandment is to love, then what will your life's report card say? How did you love God? How did you love yourself? How did you love others? When we are friends with Jesus, abiding in him through prayer with love, we will be guided into a deeper connection of love for God, for ourselves, and others. And it is through our friendship with Jesus that what is true of him becomes true of us by the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus living in us and us living in him. All right, so I have a test for you. Who can name this tune? All right, shout it out. What is it? Thank you for being a friend. Very good. Yes, it was the theme song of the Golden Girls, that sitcom, I think it was the mid-80s, early 90s. And when you stop and look at some of the words, and I'm going to just share a verse with you. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal, get it? And a confidant. And I am not ashamed to say that I hope it will always stay this way. Thank you for being a friend. And I hope that song is stuck in your head all week. (laughs) Friendship is something to be grateful for. Grateful for having friends and Grateful for getting to be a friend. And thankful for Jesus, a friend who did lay down his life for you and me. His heart is true. He is a pal and a confidant. And when we understand the depth of this relationship the type of friendship that Jesus is speaking about, well, it opens us up for a lasting true friendship with the promise of a Savior who will always be there for you, who loves you, and in whom your joy will be made complete. Jesus wants to be friends with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Karen. And thank you, David, for your playing. Let's stand and let's worship God who chooses us Um, and who can be our friend. Let's sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am though tossed about with many a conflict. 
inflict many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O oh Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I Abiding in the presence of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of joy unending, you promise to be with us as a friend who shares in life's delights and sorrows. Through your time on earth, you gave us examples of how to live as friends to one another. Encourage us to be transparent and humble so that we may welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of life together. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the lands and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide them with good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders 
to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, in Jesus, you traveled among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer shelter, community, food, clothing, and peace of mind. Provide strength, encouragement, and healing to those in need, especially Norm Beardsley and Larry Barber, and provide comfort and peace to the father of Ken Schmidt. Mourning with those who mourn, bring peace to those remembering loved ones who are at rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Renewing one, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding. Giving thanks for new life in Christ, we celebrate with those baptized this weekend. Madison, Carter, Quinn, Beckett, Keegan, Declan, Eli, and Brinley. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. And you may be seated. In the middle of September, neighbors gathered together, enjoying tasty treats from local food trucks, playing games, and learning all about cooking, cooking safety from fire department personnel. That's right, it was the food truck festival here at Lord of Life, and it was such a fun event. Thanks to your gifts, we were able to send invitation postcards to all of our neighbors in a three-mile radius. And we are truly grateful to be a welcoming presence in this neighborhood. So thank you. The offering will now be received, and you may give in any of the ways listed on the screen. If you brought something in person, the collection boxes are right outside the sanctuary. Or if online or texting is, makes more sense to you, please feel free to pull out your phone as an act of worship. So thank you so much for how you support this community. Thank you, Pastor Caitlin. Boy, food trucks last month, trunk or treat this month. We've got something going on here. <laughs> Please stand for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, let's sing one more song together. Thank you so much for our special guest, Greg Byers, for playing uh, cello. Uh, it's added so much to worship. Uh, and uh, yes, let's sing. Sarah's going to lead us in this last song. that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but you brought me in. Oh, your love for me. Oh, your love for me. Who the sun
children of God, loved beyond measure, sent to serve the world. I am chosen, not forsaken. 